sometimes think back to the carefree days of my youth. Going to the old fishing hole, sneaking apples from Old Man Johnson's orchard, catching fireflies at night. The salad days. Wait a minute, that wasn't my life at all. I grew up in the suburbs, played video games, and read comics. Just the same, it was the salad days. Which inspires today's salad recipes. Tuna niçoise, kale Caesar, and creamy cucumber. I'm Garrett Shack, and today that's what we're cooking on the coast. It's salad days here on Cooking on the Coast. We're concocting three satisfying salads today. Tuna niçoise, kale Caesar, and a creamy cucumber salad. Let's get started. Okay, all three of these salads have one thing in common, and that is mayonnaise. So the first thing we need to do is make our base mayo. Uh, we have our trusty blender right here, and this is where we're gonna get started. We'll start with a couple of egg yolks. I've got one in there. And I just wanted to show everyone at home a trick on how to, uh, how to separate the, the yolk from the, uh, from the white here. So we'll give it a little crack. And then using the shells, just sort of knock that yolk back and forth just like this. And you'll see all that white will come apart. And all we're left is, is the yummy cholesterol-ridden egg yolk. Some Dijon mustard, in it goes. Some garlic, always garlic. I've got a little Tabasco sauce to give it a touch of heat. Again, we can adjust it afterwards. Worcestershire sauce. We need some vinegar in there. We're just using a citrus champagne vinegar here. You could use uh, uh, you could use just plain white vinegar, but I like to sort of church it up a little bit. So put a little bit of that in there. Now all these agents are going to act as our emulsifier for when we get this thing rolling. And the important thing here is when we add our vegetable oil, and we are using vegetable oil. It's okay to use olive oil if you prefer, but because I'm using it in three different applications, I really want a base neutral flavor here. So I've got a couple cups of vegetable oil, and we're just gonna get things sort of moving. So we'll turn this bad boy on to a good, good high, uh, high blend here, and then slowly start pouring in that oil. Again, the key here is to pour slowly. There we go. Once that emulsification has started, we can have a look at it and make sure we've got some, a uh, bit hard to see at home there, but you'll just have to take my word for it. It's, uh, it's coming together nicely. It's emulsifying, and I know that because it's starting to thicken up inside. So we'll turn it back on here and get it going. You can start pouring a little bit faster. Don't go, uh, don't go crazy here though, just a little nice easy pace. The sound of the blender is actually starting to tell me that this is getting nice and thick. Stop it and have another look here. Yeah, I'm gonna tilt it toward the camera here so that hopefully you can see that. Just cause I really want you to be able to see the sort of how thick it is. And then we're gonna make adjustments to the, uh, to the, to the mayo as we go here. Can you sort of see right in there? How's that? So you see, it's like I can see the bottom of the uh, bottom of the blender. That's exactly what we want. That's fine. What I'm going to do, though, because it is quite thick, I'm going to add just a touch. Let me tidy that up a little bit here. I'm going to add a touch of water to this. So this is where we get to play. This is where we get to have some fun with our mayonnaise. We get to sort of thin it out a touch. We get to uh, add some more flavorings once we give it a taste, and sort of decide where we want it to go. But this here would be considered your very basic sort of mayonnaise. Okay. We'll have a peek in there. I like that. I like that. Just give it a quick taste. See, it's got a nice color. That's the color of those uh, free range organic uh, egg yolks. Also the Dijon mustard in there. Mm. Now, I haven't added any salt or pepper at this point, and so that's what we need to do next. A little salt. Fresh cracked pepper, of course. And give it another, give it another blast. All right, great. Now, we're gonna move on to our cucumbers. Uh, we're gonna start with the cucumber salad, I guess, because it's great for this one to be able to sit just for a little bit. Just chop it in half like that, very simply, and then we're gonna do a quick slice here on this cucumber. See, I'm using kind of a, a larger knife here, and you'll see why in a second here. And then we're gonna pop that into our mixing bowl here. So here's why we have that nice big knife. 
Need a little onion here. We're using a, just sort of a medium size white onion, yellow onion. I'm not gonna use the whole thing, probably just about a quarter of this onion here. The English cucumber, the long English cucumber is amongst the largest. So they can grow over two feet long. They're amazing, amazing cucumbers and the ones we're using here today, quite delicious. I'm gonna put a pinch of salt in here. You can adjust that seasoning as you go. Salt's gonna help draw some moisture out and create a bit of a, uh, a, bit of a sauce here for our, our salad as well. Chili flakes, because I like a little bit of heat in there. Again, go as little as you'd like. You could use fresh chilies too, that'd be great. Mix that around as well. We have some white vinegar. In this case, I want to use a, a white vinegar. Uh, you could use white wine vinegar, but that's going to change the flavor. I'm really just looking for the beautiful fresh cucumbers to be the, uh, the, the star here. And then we'll grab our trusty mayonnaise and put a nice big dollop of mayonnaise in there. And we'll let this sit. You can let it sit in the fridge probably an hour would be great. Uh, I wouldn't let it sit too much longer. You wouldn't want to do it the day before, but an hour in the fridge would be perfect. I'll pour this into our serving bowl here. This is the one we're going to present it uh, at the picnic with. In it goes. And all those flavors will start coming together. The chilies, the onions. Now, we'll be back later in the show to pull together our tuna niçoise, kale Caesar, and finish off the creamy cucumber salad. But first, right after the break, we're getting out of the studio. You'll want to stick around for that. Okay, here we are in this amazing outdoor kitchen at Wildwood Outdoor Living Center. With me is Gord Nickel. Gord, how are you? Good, Garrett, how are you? On the menu today is a delicious gourmet blue cheeseburger. Nice. And we've got a, an amazing grill to cook it on, so I thought, well, we can't just do plain old burgers. Yeah. Let's let's actually do a stuffed hamburger. Oh, So here's okay. where you and I get to have some fun. <laughs> First thing we want to do, flatten it down a little bit All in right. our hand. And then take a bit of blue cheese. Okay. Got some local blue cheese here. You kind of want to squish it a little bit. You don't want big chunks because what's going to happen is that'll oh. pierce through your burger as you go. Okay. So just kind of crumble it up <laughs> so you got some flat pieces in there. No, that looks good. Don't be shy. If you want more, you can use oh, more yeah. if you want a little I bit love less. It. Okay, so once you've got it like that. Well, it doesn't quite look like cut. yours. But... That's all right. Okay. You just sort of close it up. Yeah, just like kind of like a clamshell. Seal that up so that Retains all the moisture and all that ooey gooey cheese will stick on the inside. Okay. And then try and flatten it down as best you can again. <laughs> now in these burgers, uh, yeah, yeah. you know, uh, there's there's some purists out there that say, nothing but beef in your burger, right? Right. Well, I'm uh, not a purist by any means, and anybody who's watched the show knows that. I like to twist things a little bit. So we make, I make more of a meatloaf, uh, meatloaf style burger. I put, <laughs> I put a little bit of egg in there, I put some uh, breadcrumb, you know, some Worcestershire, some Tabasco. We, now, nice high heat on the grill. We've got this gorgeous Jackson grill. We want to use really high heat, and we're going to fire them right on the hot grill. We're going to say, go to sleep there for a little bit. All right. Perfect. All right, Gord, so it's really important here to have a nice high heat under your grill, okay. especially to begin with. We're not going to cook it all the way through in that high heat, but we want to develop that crust so right. that we don't have to use all those fancy sprays and oils oh, and all that kind okay. of stuff. So we're going to let the natural fat in the burger yeah. kind of do its job on the grill, and yeah. also the grill itself is going to create that crust and then it won't stick to your grill. It'll be super easy to flip over. Okay, so how come mine is flaming up and yours isn't? Mine will eventually. Oh, don't worry, yeah. Some of that fat will start to cook out of there. You can see we're starting to get a few flames and it will start to flame up. Okay. And we'll just be cautious of that. And so at that point, we'll flip it over, right. let it grow crust again, and then we'll move it to a slower part of the grill. Oh, uh, okay. And because we have this beautiful grill, oh, like yeah. how, big is, nice this, how big is this bed? This is a uh, 42. Oh, nice, <clears throat> yeah, right? So 42 inches, we got lots of room to play. Let's yeah. maximize the whole thing. Now, we're, we've got some gorgeous burger buns here. So okay. let's start building up. Yeah, what are burgers. those anyways? It's a brioche bun. So you see it's kind of got that yellowish tinge yeah. to it. So it's kind of like a sweet <clears throat> dough. Um, have a smell. Mm, it, it smells is. almost it's like a, that Easter yeah, bread, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, I exactly. Love it. I love that sort of sweetness of the dough. Uh, we've got some fresh arugula here. In Australia, they call it rocket. 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 Yeah, and uh, it's got a real pepperness to it, so give that a bite. And you'll see it's got like this lovely... Mm, you know, we um, we sell a seed that is like oh, yeah. a rocket mix and it, it comes up in all different types. Yeah, nice. Nice. Well, nice. Yeah, Very this nice. stuff is gorgeous. And mm. blue cheese and black pepper go super well together. So why wouldn't blue cheese and arugula go well mm. together. Okay, so we'll load it on there, we'll a fair bit. That's then, really nice. I've got a few of these crispy onions. Like I said, we're going gourmet, so some crispy onions here. Perfect. 
I'm just gonna stack that. So do you have to make these yourselves, or can you buy them? You can, this? yeah, absolutely. You, I think you can buy them. I think I've seen them like uh, at sort of uh, ethnic food marts and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, but they're really easy to make. Just slice them as thin as you can, yeah. uh, and then dredge them with a little bit of flour, deep fry them until they're sort of nice and golden brown. Oh, nice. But, man, they're tasty. Mm, they are. They're a snack. Even my, even my kids munch them down. <laughs> now, let's have a look at our burgers here. Okay. We've pre-cooked a few, because these do take a bit longer, right? All right. Because we have the blue cheese in the middle, and we're using a, a fresh patty, um, it's going to puff up a little bit, and it's going to take a bit longer. But let's have a look. See how we're going here. See yeah, right, didn't no, even stick. No sticking. Yeah. We got those beautiful grill marks yeah. on there. That's that crust I was telling you about. Perfect. Now we're going to let those finish up. And let's grab some of these burgers that are already mm -hmm. ready. That way we can, uh, you know, use the magic television to make this, uh, make this go a little quicker. <laughs> Look how that happened. I know, hey? Look, you can see the blue cheese oozing oh. out of it a little bit. See what I did? Oh, that's juicy right there. Oh, man. Oh, my goodness. That's going to be delicious. And we're simply going to fire a top right on top of there. Give it a little squeeze down. And that's our blue cheese stuffed burger with crispy onions and arugula. Fantastic. Right, I'm looking forward to digging into that. Before we do though, remember you were talking about the, oh, yeah. uh, the fire on the grill? <laughs> yeah. That's that. my See? burger again. Oh, yeah. mine's for you too. <laughs> that's, that, that's the fat coming out of it. Now once it's got a chance to heat up, we're gonna move it over. I've got this side of the grill over here down on low. Oh, okay. So we're just gonna take it up off the grill and slide it over to the low side. So how like many that. times do you burn your fingers in a day? Uh, well, I've done it so many times that I actually don't feel it anymore. I don't know how you perfect. do that. <laughs> At this point, you can close the lid. Okay. And you just let those bad boys finish cooking all the way through. Because we're dealing with ground beef, we want to make sure that it's, uh, that it's cooked all the way through, right? We don't right. want any more red in the middle. Now, what do you say we uh, cut this guy? Yeah, absolutely. See how it looks on the inside, and then we'll have a bite. Oh. Oh. I see the blue cheese stuck to my knife there. I, I'm thinking I'm going to grab this and jump in the hot tub. That's and, a brilliant idea. And, and cold, cold beer, hot tub, okay. and a blue cheese stuffed oh, burger. Man. I'm with you. I'm, <laughs> I'm right behind you. We're heading there. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to chow down on these and maybe have a soak in a tub. When we come back, we'll be back in the kitchen studio. All that right. is great. All right. Mm. No. Salad days here in our kitchen. We're working on tuna niçoise, kale Caesar, and a creamy cucumber salad. We want to make some. Uh, what would a Caesar salad be without uh, without bacon bits? So we'll get some bacon in a pan here. Now we're going to do something a little bit more unique here. Uh, we're going to render out some of the fat out of that bacon, and then we're going to use that same pan with the bacon to toast our fresh croutons. We've got some lovely fresh uh, Dutch crunch uh, baguette here, but you can use anything. A brioche would be lovely, or uh, focaccia croutons would be great too. In the meantime, we're going to get our Caesar dressing started. So we have our mayonnaise base already, which is great. And on our board here, we're going to start chopping up some ingredients. So we have some capers in our Caesar. Not too much anchovy. If you're a big fan of it, go ahead and fire a little bit more in there. But I, uh, I like the saltiness from it, but I don't want too much. Capers, anchovies. We're going to put a little bit of uh, Parmesan cheese in there and then just mix it all together with that mayonnaise that we already made. So let's get a nice scoop here. Look at that. Put our anchovies, our capers. Now we're putting a twist on this. So yes, of course, the uh, Caesar salad is a comfort food. I remember having it as a kid and loving it, but we're using kale today. Kale's super, super full of vitamin C and all sorts of other uh, great things that are good for our bodies. It's like a super food. Thin it out with a little bit of lemon juice. And I'm gonna crumble a little bit of this Parmesan in there, and then we'll mix it all in with our salad here. Like I said, we're using this uh, baby kale here, so it's quite tender. You can actually eat the stalks and everything. Mm. It's great, and it has such a wonderful flavor. And add that dressing right to it. I see our bacon still sizzling away over there, which is great, rendering out that fat. We wanna make sure that all those leaves get nicely coated. This will also start to wilt the lettuce just a little bit, which is perfect. It's okay, because we got lots of fiber in this kale. And then we'll get it onto our serving board here. Just a nice handful on there. Oh, that looks spectacular, doesn't it? Vibrant green, so good, okay. See how our friend's friend the bacon's doing over here? Sizzling away, starting to get some caramelization. I can see that that fat is starting to render out in there, which is spectacular. In the meantime, let's start it on our tuna. Got a pan here, we're gonna warm it up. 
We want to use a vegetable oil, something with a bit of a higher smoking point because we want a really great sear on this tuna. You can see we're using albacore tuna here today. And the reason for that is that albacore is actually a more sustainable uh, tuna that's fished right here off, off the coast of Vancouver Island. Okay, we're gonna simply season this with salt and pepper. Fresh cracked pepper. Now it's very important not to overcook tuna. If you leave this in the pan for too long, you end up with that stuff that comes in a tin and that's the last thing we want. You ready for this guys? We're gonna get this into the pan here. There we go. Literally gonna be about 45 seconds on each side. Give our bacon another turn. Just about ready to get the uh, croutons going in there. In fact, let's do that right now. Now these are gonna soak up some of that uh, bacon fat in there. I know, I know, it's not hard smart, but tell, trust me, it's delicious. We're not eating it every day. We're not doing a whole loaf of bread. You can have two croutons, okay? Maybe three. It's looking great. I'm gonna throw some cracked pepper in there. Let's have a look at this guy here. Oh, oh man, look at that. Golden brown, perfect. I can still see right in here and on the sides that it's still nice and rare in the middle, so that's ideal. Give our croutons another toss. And those are gonna be ready to go. Perfect, that looks great actually. They're not completely crunchy or toasted, but they're nice and warm and they've soaked up some of that bacon fat. Let's put these right on top here. Hooey! Look at that. Just awesome. All right. Now I'll finish that with just a little bit of this more Parmesan here. And our kale Caesar is done. All coming together now. One more turn on our tuna. Oh man, it's like I've done that before. That color looks amazing. Let's grab a spoon and get into our mayo here. Our friend the mayo, the king of the show today. And we'll just put some of this all over our board. And you're thinking, you're like, oh, what are you doing? That's not art, that looks terrible. Hang on, wait for it, wait for it. Put it all together here. Great way to use up some leftover potatoes. I've got some fingerling potatoes here. They were kicking around from dinner last night. We have some tomatoes. I've got a, some few different varieties of beautiful heirloom tomatoes here. And this salad's gonna steal the show. Moroccan sun-dried olives we're using here today. Okay, some green beans. Same sort of idea. And then we want to put an egg on there. So I've got this boiled egg. Oh, I love when the yolk is still runny like that in my boiled eggs. Spectacular. And then let's have a look at our tuna. Move our board to the front so I can cut the tuna. Look at that. Whew, love it. Love when it's medium rare like that in the center. If you overcook that, it gets so dry. So don't be afraid to leave it rare in the middle or even medium rare like that. Okay, and let's neatly place these all right on our plate here. And now I know we're all excited about our tuna and our kale Caesar, but let's not forget about our cucumber salad that we gotta pull out of the fridge still. This is a, uh, a, a creme de balsamica, so it's a white balsamic cream. And it's a little bit thicker, but it's gonna add a little bit of punch to that salad. And then we'll drizzle it with a little bit of olive oil. Okay, and some fresh cracked pepper. We're almost there. Make some room for our cucumber salad, which I gotta grab out of the fridge. And the last thing we need on there, cucumbers and mint go together like, hand, like peas and carrots, I guess. So let's fire a little bit of mint on top of this guy. All right, there you have it. Tuna niçoise, kale Caesar, and creamy cucumber salad. Looks amazing. Now what better way to enjoy a satisfying salad than with a choice beverage? With me today, Kate McDonald from Clive's Classic Lounge. Hi, Gary. Right. So good to good, see you. Thanks good. for coming on the show. Thanks. All right, now there's lots of stuff here in front of us. Where do we get started? I know. Okay, so instead of uh, giving a man a fish, I am going to teach a man to fish. So we're going to quickly make an infusion here. I like so it. I like we're it. making a mojito today, but. I thought it would be neat to uh, show people how to spice up, step up your game on that mojito front. Okay. So I use rose and hibiscus, bam, bam, you've got an infusion. People think this is so difficult. And how, now, so how long would you leave it sit on like that? Let it sit overnight or that's even it, for yeah. a couple hours. Oh, yeah, okay. it really doesn't take long. This is one that's already finished and it sat for a couple hours. And that's what you end up with is yep. that uh, infusion right there. Exactly, cool. exactly. So we're gonna take two ounces of that because you wanna taste 
As Hank Hill says, taste the meat, not the heat. So we want to taste the booze. <laughs> nice. Another like infusion it. I've got going here, and I'm making a little bit of a mess, but that's okay. That's right. The mason jars. That's more fun. Uh, this one's cucumber and cinnamon. Oh, nice. And then we're just going to take some mint. Do you want to start picking some mint? Yeah, absolutely. Perfect. Oh, that smells great. Amazing, right? Yeah. Really quick to do. Just grab a bunch, pick it off. Grab a bunch, so pick fast. it off. Perfect. Right. And then we're just going to take it and clap it in our hands. No I muddling. I love this part. No muddling. Yeah. It just releases all the, all the smells and all the scents, hey? Like completely. Like, wow. Completely. When and then lemon the juice. When you do it in the lounge, you can smell that. As soon as somebody, you hear that clap, and all of a sudden you totally. get this waft of mint. Yeah. Totally. Awesome. It's really nice. Really nice. Um, and I always find that if people muddle, what they often end up doing is releasing all the chlorophyll in the veins, and so then it tastes kind of Bruise it, earthy tastes and grassy. all of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Exactly. A little bit so of simple smart, syrup. So smart, Katie, hey? So Every smart. Every once in a while. <laughs> so I get people that do blender mojitos, and I know those flex of mint sometimes taste nice but you are releasing a bunch of stuff where you're going to have to counteract bitterness or super mm, yeah, like right. earthy kind of a dirty taste and pull it out of your teeth which is really uh, awkward yeah. at times yeah exactly All right. soda water soda water perfect uh, so you can buy any kind of soda water. I do stay away from sometimes like um, like San Pellegrino and Perrier and stuff. It actually doesn't have enough carbonation that I find it holds up in a oh, drink. Really? Okay. So I actually will go for something like Canada Dry or Schweppes. Nice. Um, add a little ice. I can smell. I can smell like the uh, the rose petal and the hibiscus, like Amazing. that floral note on the, on the cocktail. Ice. Amazing, right? Brilliant. And this is just like super simple mojito, but turned a little gourmet, as they say. A little gourmet. Yes. Oh, I love your French. Oh, it's thank you. Good. Thank you. All right, All what right. should we try first? Where do you reckon this uh, tastes best with? Uh, I would go hibiscus with uh, this guy over here, hibiscus and our cucumber season. and cinnamon with uh, the niçoise. All right, I'm digging in. Oh, you don't fancy have to straws, use straws, eh? No, I'm definitely using the straw. Are you kidding me? I'm dying to try this one. Mm. I just grabbed the whole bowl. <laughs> That's perfect. Mm. Mm. That is delicious. I love mm. the way the flowers, like the rose and the hibiscus, love the way that tastes in that drink. Mm -hmm. Spectacular. Mm -hmm. And hibiscus is like super juicy, so mm -hmm. it kind of adds this like juicy quality to the salad. So good. Well, let's try them both with the tuna niçoise in just one sec. Done. Thanks for coming on the show. <laughs> no problem. Thanks for having me. Check out our website where you'll find more information on today's show and maybe a few surprises. I'm Garrett Shack. Thanks for watching. And don't forget to savor the flavor. <laughs> All right, let's dig in. Yeah. Moroccan center and olives. <laughs>